This episode of Spreadsheets and Swords, we're taking our beloved series into uncharted territory. Instead of the usual passive role, I've decided to take a more active approach to this data set. I wanted to see what would occur if you killed the English monarch in succession order. So I booted up the game in debug mode, sharpened the headsman's axe, and got to work on lobbing off English monarch heads. We begin our journey with the Godwin family. They are the current holders of the English crown in 1066 and are the first ones who will be put to the sword. Debug mode is a set of game tools that allow you to modify the game behavior outside of the normal means. One of those things is killing a character on command, which is what I'm going to do to every person that holds the English title without unpausing the game. So it will be as if no time has passed, but hundreds will have died. Here's a diagram showing the progression of the different families that held the title. I've also added a visualization of the territorial change from monarch to monarch. As we move down the flow chart of death, I would humbly ask for your subscription to this channel. A video like this is a large undertaking, both of time and resources, so your support helps me make more of them. Let's jump back to our charts and talk about what occurred during this experiment. This pictogram depicts how many monarchs died, splitting that number into whether or not they were of age and their gender by game standards. A total of 263 monarchs from 47 different families were killed on this bloody Saturday. Yes, I did look up what day of the week September 15, 1066 was. How reliable this information is, I would guess somewhat. Either way, 179 were adults and 84 were under the age of 16. 74 were female and 189 were male. As you may have saw, we stopped at a 263 because the 264th was a computer generated mayor whose heirs were other mayor. So it could have continued on murdering English royalty, but it would have been fruitless due to the fact that there would have been an endless supply of randomly generated mayors to take the role. Our next graph is a histogram of the ages of all 263 monarchs. As you can see, the youths have this one in the bag. The oldest monarch being 69 and the youngest being 0. Average age was 22 years old, which just reinforces the fact that the medieval life expectancy is very low compared to our modern standards. Also doesn't help that I murdered 84 underage monarchs, 39 of those being under the age of 5. Before this murder fest got underway, I thought it would be interesting to record the amount of titles each new monarch held and see the progression of power accumulation. As you can see, it's a steady climb to 166, with a few drop-offs here and there when monarchs had multiple children. One of the most severe ones that displays is, is when the Dunbar family split their titles in half, about 70, and then immediately rebound to 140. Side note, the last king has a negative 224 opinion penalty with all his vassals because he is 137 over his demean limit plus having 17 duchies. If I were to actually play this character, this kingdom would fall apart immediately. On to education traits. This pie chart here gives us a breakdown of all the monarchs who had an education trait at the time of their death. The most common trait for our kings and queens is martial, with about 43 of them having that trait, which also plays into the fact that medieval culture forced most, if not all, monarchs to be frontline generals or have some level of competency when it comes to the art of war. Diplomacy was a trait that was predominantly held by female rulers, 
please draw your own conclusions from that. For this graph, you can see the breakdown in the culture for each ruler that held the English title. There was a total of 17 total cultures represented. For ease of understanding, I decided to roll them up into their major culture groups that Paradox has created. Surprisingly enough, the majority of the English monarchs were not even from the major cultural group that historically owned the title West Germanic, but in fact, it is the Iberian cultural group that wins out with 118 representatives. Here is a further breakdown of this Iberian block. It has nine subcultures, which makes it one of the major culture groups in this game next to Turk and Iranian. You can see six of the nine represented here with Asturleonese and Castilian having the most monarchs at 27 apiece. After that comes the two Germanic culture groups. As you can see, there isn't as much cultural diversity in these two groups as there was with the Iberian bloc. Finally, we have the Brythonic and Frankish culture groups. Not a large representation from our sample, but still an interesting to see that they were able to gain the throne. Side note, most of the French monarchs were Carlings, and I'm happy to see their line extinguished by my hands. Here's our last chart showing the five most represented dynasties. Not very surprised by Jimena and Godwin making this list, but Jairo and Lara were two no-name families to me. This just goes to show these families were all good Catholics. Here's some random observations that I have. William the Conqueror never inherited the English title, even though he has a claim, and both other claimants, Yingling and Estide, both had it passed through their family. I never unpaused the game, so he is technically still at war with England for that title. One other random observation I had was that all the rulers were Catholic. I expected to have at least one Norse or heretical Catholic sect to take the title, but nobody was able to. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Now that this one is in the books, I would like to hear from you all and see what next scenario or character I should cover. Again, thank you and have a good rest of your day.